Um, fiber is the most, in my opinion, the most underappreciated nutrient. Fiber is basically like a broom or a jaru for your intestines. Don't be afraid to let your kids try different colored and different textured grains. You'd be surprised that they might actually like it better and that's much better for them. Hello, welcome back again to the Circe Health Pod. Today we're lucky enough to have Chef Michael back with us and he's going to share some of his knowledge and hopefully I will impart some of my knowledge as well. We're gonna talk about um, treasures of the kitchen cabinet, things that you probably have in your pantry at home that have amazing health benefits and uh, how you can use them in your daily cooking. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi everyone and it's a pleasure to be back. We're gonna be talking about ingredients in our kitchen and how new ingredients are coming into our professional kitchens as well as home kitchens and how chefs are using them to the best results. So our first ingredient that we're going to be talking about is olives. Now as chefs, we, we use olives in pasta, we're using olives in pizzas, but have you ever tried cooking with olives? They're a great ingredient to cook with. So when you're making pestos or a hot olive salad, as well as did you know that olives are also being grown in Rajasthan and olive oil is being made from it? I don't think you did know about it. So Jane, let's talk about some of the health benefits of olives. Sure, I didn't know about uh, Rajasthan making olives. What, does that mean olive oil will be less expensive for us then? Hopefully. Yes. So olive oil is probably the main uh, oil that we use in our kitchen and I'll tell you why in just a second. Um, I guess I'll tell you why right now. <laughs> so olive oil is a plant-based oil, and the great thing about plant-based oils is they do not contain saturated fat. It is liquid at room temperature. Why is saturated fat bad? Because saturated fat is the type that clogs your arteries and causes problems with strokes, heart attacks, um, leg pain, etc. So obviously you want to avoid saturated fat as much as possible. Most people know that olive oil is good for you, but maybe some other things you didn't know about olive oil and olives themselves is that they're high in vitamin E. E is an elephant. Um, vitamin E is actually a very potent antioxidant. It's protective for your heart, protective for your bones. Um, there's some studies that show it might actually be anti-cancer, hence the name antioxidant. Also, vitamin E is super important in liver health. In fact, uh, when we have patients that have liver issues, we give them concentrated vitamin E to help protect their liver. So why not get it in a delicious plant form, natural form, like olives? And finally, olives are a great snack. I, um, a lot of times I'll tell my patients, instead of grabbing something salty like chips or french fries, have a bowl of olives. They will curb that salt craving, but they'll also give you good fats and good vitamins and minerals as well. In fact, when I was pregnant, I had been known to eat half a kilo of olives a day. I wouldn't recommend that to other people, but just shows my love of <laughs> olives. <laughs> moving on. So moving on, we're going to be talking about millets, and millets are the new superfoods. And everyone is from the rich to the poor is getting into eating a lot of millets these days. Now, everyone just thinks millets is for your breads and your rotis. But I, in the kitchen, we can make some beautiful salads out of them. We can, you know, in place of couscous, kind of substitute couscous for millets. Um, cooking some curries with millets also, uh, like making your, uh, like falafel mm. balls with it and putting them into a gravy dish. So expanding from beyond rotis. And I think people also want to know more about the health benefits of millet, so. And I just want to ask before I get into that, I think people are always concerned about alternative grains. Are these very expensive? Or are they easy to find? They're very easy to find and they're not at all expensive. You just have to kind of go to the local Kirana shop and uh, talk to the guy. He will get it for you. But the supermarkets are full of them and also that so-called organic millet, which yes. is available. Now that's expensive. That is expensive. Yeah. I've, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about the health benefits, I mean, um, one kind of obvious thing is any, any whole grain, any, uh, which includes millet and, uh, you know, jowar, sorghum, uh, that sort of thing, very high in fiber. And you've probably heard me talk about fiber for hours, but I will continue today. Um, fiber is the most, in my opinion, the most underappreciated nutrient. Fiber is basically like a broom or a jaru for your intestines. 
think of it as brushing out all the bad stuff. So along with the food that you just ate, it takes out a lot of the fat, it takes out a lot of the chemicals and additives, and you eliminate it when you eliminate the rest of your waste. So more fiber is better, always. Um, in addition to the fiber part, there's also great vitamins, especially B vitamins, which are very important for hair, skin, and nails, very important for your brain growth, especially your kids' brain growth. So the more whole grains and millets you can have is, the, is better. And don't be afraid to give it to your kids. Um, believe it or not, my kids, this is not specifically for millets, but my kids actually prefer brown white brown rice to white rice. So don't be afraid to let your kids try different colored and different textured grains. You'd be surprised that they might actually like it better and that's much better for them. That's such wonderful news for all. You know, there's this one ingredient which I think is overly used. It's there in our chaats, it's there in our curries from chole to, and it's called chickpeas. It's there in virtually every meal across the table across the country. And it's such a versatile ingredient. And though it does give a lot of gas to some people, I think. But we chefs love to use it in almost everything. And even making chickpea foam, which is kind of replacing eggs, mm -hmm. uh, as well as, um, you know, the, the chickpea foam is also being used to make your shoe pastry these days, wow. vegan shoe pastry. And the, the usages of foam from this is so versatile. And chefs are experimenting a lot with it. So coming back to the health benefits, uh, let's talk about it. So chickpeas are one of my favorite things of all time. Like you said, Chef Michael, it's so versatile. You can have it in so many different forms and it's good for you in basically every form. You mentioned about the gas part. So Ajoy has a video on this and you can learn more about it. But um, Yes, when you start having more fiber and more beans and legumes, yes, you will have a little more gas. You might feel a little bloated, but please, I beg you, give it time because these are really the best foods you can have are beans and legumes. They have fiber, they have protein, they have vitamins, they keep you full. So if you can kind of get over that hump of being a little more gassy, maybe add some probiotics in, that'll help, and lots of water, then you're good to go. So don't worry about the gas. Um, or maybe, you know, stay home for a couple of days while you're in your transition <laughs> period. <laughs> Sorry about your family. Um, so back to other health benefits. So um, B vitamins, similar to what I just mentioned with the, um, the whole grains. Uh, and I think I mentioned also um, about fiber, ton of fiber in beans and legumes and chickpeas. But there's a lot of protein. In fact, I would say that chickpeas, especially in India, are going to be one of the best sources of protein that you can have for a person that's vegetarian or a vegan or plant-based. Um, you don't have to limit it just to like chole and chats. You can um, add basin chickpea flour to your breads, to your chapatis, and it'll add extra protein that way. Um, Chef Michael mentioned about using the, the chickpea, um, I guess the leftover water from when you cook chickpeas. You can add that as an egg substitute. It has the same amount of protein as eggs and zero cholesterol and mm -hmm probably very little to no fat at all. So that's a great, um, a great substitute. And easy, you know, it's something you would normally throw away, so it's a good way to have zero wastage in your kitchen as well. And then one more thing, very important, calcium. Um, everyone thinks calcium only comes from dairy products, right? They only think dahi, paneer, milk, of course. Yes, it does. And this is a subject for another video, but actually the calcium from plant-based foods is much better absorbed by your body and your bones than um, animal-based calcium. Um, and chickpeas are a great source of calcium, chickpeas and other legumes. So eat your chickpeas and feel happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, whilst we're on favorite ingredients, another favorite of mine is uh, soya beans. And I love uh, going to a Japanese restaurant where they lightly toss the soya beans with a little bit of chili oil, some mm -hmm. sesame seeds, and then they steam it. And then you just chew on the beans. And I think that's the yummiest part of being messy and eating food. Yes. You really enjoy it when it's, you know, when you get it down to the messy part of it. And, uh, you know, we had one of these so-called bloggers. I remember this fun moment in the restaurant. And this blogger wallops down the beans with the pod. And I am looking at them and saying, you're a blogger. You're supposed to know food. But anyway, let's just get on with the story. But 
And I know your son loves them. He, yes. he just craves for them every time they're going out. And it's so much fun watching him eat. You know, he's very choosy and picky when he eats his beans, but it's great fun. So let's talk about that. Yeah, I have a funny story. I will keep it short about um, our oldest son. When he was um, nine months old, nine months, 10 months old, in the middle of the night, suddenly we hear screaming and crying from his room. He was standing up in his crib and he could barely talk, but he said, Amma, want edamame? And he cried so much that he actually made himself throw up. We gave him edamame the next day, needless to say. So this is another plug for um, introducing your kids to unique foods. Similar to other beans, soybeans are super healthy for kids and they usually love them. Um, so, you know, both of our kids love edamame, love soy. Um, my other favorite form of soy is tofu. Tofu, thankfully, is very easy to come by in India. Mm -hmm. I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like it's less expensive than it used to be. Yeah. Um, so it, you don't have to worry about going to some fancy store to find it. Um, but the best part about tofu is that not only does it have the health benefits of soy, so lots of protein, lots of fiber, but it also has been fermented. And fermented foods are so good for you. Um, they provide good bacteria, what we call prebiotics and probiotics to your gut. Um, they, as Ajoy says, plant a happy garden in your intestines and, uh, and they're e it's easier to absorb nutrients and to break down food. So you always want a happy gut, basically. Um, so what did I say? Protein, fiber, lots of vitamins, again, lots of B vitamins, um, and also some E vitamins as well in, in tofu and soy. Oh, one thing I wanna say about, tofu, about soy in general, we also have videos on this. I'm sure you can find them quickly, but please don't be afraid of soy. Um, this is unfortunately an urban legend that you probably know as a chef too. Soy is not going to feminize men and boys. Um, if that were actually true, then all of East Asia, like China and Japan would all be women, right? So that's obviously not true. Um, it also does not cause breast cancer or other female cancers. In fact, there's some studies that show it protects against breast cancer or protects against breast cancer from coming back. I would only caution if you are someone that has had estrogen receptor positive or ER positive breast cancer, and this is something to talk with your doctor, please check with them before you start having a lot of soy. Most likely it's fine, but in that very specific case, it may not be. So I would obviously talk to your doctor or you can talk to me about it first. But please don't be afraid of soy. It's such a perfect and delicious nutrient. You know, when I was doing some research for my South American restaurant, I came across that potatoes were over 1,500 species of potatoes, wow. of which over 1,000 of them are poisonous. Oh. And the 500 that are good to eat, you have to be careful how you cook them. And it's, we chefs love cooking with potatoes because you have sweet varieties, you have a starchy variety. And even in India, uh, the kind of potatoes you get in Central India to the ones from either the north or the south, there is a difference in the flavors and the textures. And you get the red ones and the brown ones, especially in India. And uh, we love cooking with potatoes from mashed potatoes, fried potatoes to, in all our charts, for example. And, um, and kids love them, especially the fried variety, which is not so very good for them, but still they love them. So you want to expand on that a bit? You're making me hungry. Um, <laughs> yes, I, potato is one of those foods that I like in every form as well. I think you see a theme here. Um, potato, I, I feel like, is a misunderstood um, vegetable, starch, whatever you want to call it. Um, we hear people all the time saying, don't eat potatoes, especially if you're diabetic or if you're overweight. Please don't believe that. Um, we're here to bring the potato back. It's okay. Um, what Michael mentioned about fried potatoes, the big thing is potatoes should be kept mostly separate from oils and dairy, really. If you keep them separate and eat them in their whole form, then they're an amazing food. You're right, I mean, there's so many different types of, of potatoes that we're lucky enough to have, especially sweet potatoes, shakrakandi, um, very good. They have lots of vitamin A or beta carotene, which is good for your eyes also. So please don't abandon the poor potato. <laughs> yeah, please don't. As chefs, we love cooking with them. I remember my uh, 
Boy Scout days and you know we used to go for all these camps. And in the camps they used to give us this very watery porridge with oats and oats or dalia in it. And I think we hated it as kids. As kids, uh, if mom served it to us, memories of boy of camp would come into mind and you would say, but you know, as chefs adding cinnamon and adding raisins to them and you know, nowadays you just want to have oats in your I even use them instead of breadcrumbs to coat a lot of my food yeah. and then bake with them. And it's such a versatile ingredient from just boring porridge. I won't say boring porridge, but yeah, it's gone beyond porridge these days where we're using in oats in our bread. Uh, uh, I'm making salads with oats. I'm playing around with oats a lot. And uh, I'm sure it's a healthy ingredient for more than just kids these days. So. Yeah, oats. Um, I think you're right. We all. Th- I also think of oats from when I was a kid, and my mom would make soggy oatmeal, and yeah. So, but thankfully, we've all moved beyond soggy oatmeal and soggy porridge for the most part. Um, oats. Oh, sorry. Oats. Uh, the most important thing about oats is that they're a very good source of fiber. Here I go again with the fiber. Um, but if you, uh, some studies have shown if you eat uh, at least one to two servings of oats a day, it can significantly reduce your bad cholesterol, which is really important. I mean, you don't have to wait till you already have bad or elevated cholesterol. You can start doing it now to keep your cholesterol mm-hmm. down. So if you can incorporate oats into your diet, it's great for your cholesterol. Yeah, a couple more things about oats. I guess um, important thing to know, just like with most foods, if you can keep the oats less processed, that makes them have higher fiber and actually... We forget about oats because they're a grain, but they have a ton of protein. In fact, um, if you are looking at alternative milks, plant-based milks, one of the highest protein milks is actually oat milk, believe it or not. More, um, about the same as soy milk, more so than almond milk. So definitely remember oats also as a source of protein. And uh, what I was mentioning about less processed. So instead of the um, instant oats, try to get rolled oats, steel cut oats. Um, You can also, for patients, or people that have gluten intolerance or can't, uh, or a celiac disease, oats are a great substitute, um, you know, oat flour and that sort of thing. So the versatile oat has lots of, I think, health benefits that most of us don't even know about. So have you ever tried growing mushrooms? Not yet. Yeah, you should. It's, should. it's quite a laborious uh, thing. It takes almost three weeks. And, wow. You know, we tried it at one of the restaurants where we worked, and you had to get this dark room and get the burlap sacks and make them wet and they put all the, uh, what are they called, the, the spores inside there mm-hmm. and then waiting for them to grow. So I think the entire process was quite fun and a lot of people don't like mushrooms because of the squishiness I guess. But I love mushrooms in my food and salads and uh, dingri mutter used to be one of my favorite dishes growing up whenever I went to an Indian restaurant. and. Um, Going to Hong Kong, when I went to Hong Kong, the, I saw so many mushrooms. You know, in India, we just had that one button mushroom, like forever. Yes. And then nowadays you're getting uh, all the, you know, the very fine mushrooms. And when I was in one of the villages uh, in Maharashtra, during the monsoons, they get a certain very thin mushroom, but it only survives a day. And they used to make a vegetable out of it. So what are your, what's your take on mushrooms? So mushrooms, another one of my favorite foods, and also another food that don't be afraid to give to your kids. Because um, I remember we would talk about mushrooms to Akash, our older one, and he was like, oh, mushrooms. But then we finally made him try it, and he loves them. And even our little one also, they, they will eat pi- literally piles of mushrooms. So don't be afraid to let your kids try them. The good thing about, another good thing about them is that they absorb flavor so well. I'm mm. sure you know they that. They do. So they're a great meat substitute, um, especially the, well, I'm not a big fan of portobello mushrooms because of the flavor, but I think that was what plant-based people had to eat for years before the advent of, you know, better meat substitutes. Anyway, I could go on forever about that. So mushrooms, health-wise, um, they have lots of great uh, minerals that um you can't find as easily in other foods. So um, zinc and copper, there's a a large concentration of zinc and copper in mushrooms. And this is super important for your immune system. So um, especially during 
you know, a pandemic or during cold and flu season, if you have lots of mushrooms, your zinc is going to be up and your frontline immune system is ready to fight anything off. Um, and much better to get zinc from mushrooms and other sources than taking a pill. It gets absorbed better. Um, also, mushrooms are a great source of potassium. Um, so I will, I will caution that if you are someone that cannot take too much potassium, then you should be cautious about how, much, how many mushrooms you eat. Otherwise, though, potassium is great for your heart, for uh, your muscle health, and uh, to, if you're having um, muscle cramps or trouble sleeping at night because of muscle cramps, try to eat more mushrooms in your diet, and that will help too. So mushroom, mushrooms, uh, potassium, zinc, copper, selenium is another um, mineral that, or element that's found in, uh, in mushrooms, also found in tomatoes, but okay. selenium is very important for prostate health too. So if you're a guy, mushrooms are even better for you. So bring on the mushrooms. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so we're going to talk about our last ingredient and it's an ingredient that was smuggled into India when during the British time. And coffee is now available almost all across India. And you know, alongside the coffee, they also grow cardamom and pepper on the same plantations. I believe they, grow well together as well as well as vanilla down south. Mm. And so, but let's talk about coffee and why do we all love it so much? So I could do a whole talk separately on coffee. Ask my husband how many cups of coffee I have <laughs> I have per day. Not everyone should, but, but coffee is wonderful. I think at some point people, you know, just like ingredients get good and bad raps. At some point, coffee had a bad rap, but if you have no medical contraindication, then coffee is so good for you. Um, so as with everything, always talk to your doctor if you're planning to increase your coffee um, or other caffeine intake. But um, one thing, uh, a couple things about coffee. The first thing is that because it has caffeine in it, it's a stimulant to your brain. It helps with concentration. It helps with mood. So it's a, a natural antidepressant. It's a natural, um, ADD or attention medicine. In fact, um, when I have little kids that have ADD or trouble paying attention in school, before putting, I try to avoid completely putting them on medicine. I, I ask them to have a little caffeine in the morning and that usually helps them get through school. So a little bit, for instance, our younger kiddo has uh, vanilla soy milk with about a tablespoon of coffee in that and that really helps him uh, get through the day. So something to think about, again, talk to your doctor first. Um, Oh, another uh, two other body systems, well, I guess one additional benefit for the brain. Um, because it's a stimulant and it's making your brain kind of work harder, many studies have shown that coffee can actually prevent Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Um, again, you know, this isn't 100% proven, but there's lots of really promising research on this. So um, if you it up your intake of coffee early in life, especially if you have a family history, then that's something that hopefully can help. Um, and finally, liver health. So um, I believe three to four cups of coffee a day has been associated with uh, almost like a liver cleansing and uh, keeping the um, impurities out of your blood, which is what the liver is supposed to do. So many, many health benefits, like I said. I'm sure we'll have a talk just on coffee in the near future. It's up to me. <laughs> it's so much fun talking about all these ingredients and how we as chefs cook it and how you as a medical practitioner promote it. And, you know, I always sometimes say chefs are kind of doctors, but not certified. And, but yes, we, sh we chefs owe it to our guests yeah. to serve them good food. And we ought to know exactly what is in the food that we're serving them. So it's been such a pleasure. And we'll talk about some more in the near future. Thank you so much, Michael. Yeah, I agree with you. I think a chef has a responsibility to give their customers the, the right food prepared the right way. I absolutely agree with you. So thank you again, as usual, for your knowledge. And yes, we'll definitely have you back for more exciting ingredients. And stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to talk about a day in the life of a plant-based family. I know you're all on the edge of your seats. See you next time. <laughs>